Mainstream media calls for final purge of gamers opposing Sweet Baby Inc. Ooh. So this should be interesting, right? Let's see how things let's see how far things have gotten worse now, because it's it's a right shit all this. This is this is terrible what's going on, it's so stupid. Hey, what's up guys? We're here. So By the way, other than him having his link down below in the description, also look into the Street Baby Inc. The, you know the community post on Steam. I follow that. You should guys should uh, you know check it out. See what games it is that Street Baby Inc. has been involved with. That's been discovered so far. And uh, yeah, f follow it yourselves. Links in the description. Today we're gonna go over some wild updates regarding the ongoing wild. Sweet Baby Inc. situation. Starting with this article that a lot of people share with me. Oh come on, BBC! Why you gotta do this? You fucking stupid idiots. Here we go. At first, I didn't even believe this is real. I mean, just look at this headline. It says, BBC gaming presenter Jules Hardy calls for current Never heard of this person. discourse to end with a final purge of ideological opponents from the medium. Yes, that is a very wild thing to see. A member of the media calling for a final purge of gamers who disagree with her. Now, at first, I thought, surely this must be an exaggeration, right? No, it's not. So here's the actual tweet that they are sourcing from her Twitter. Can we agree that for? Oh wait, why am I say, why am I reading this? He's gonna read it, right? Account, it says, "Can we all agree that for there round two of this, it can be the final purge of these kinds of gamers?" It this is just a, that alone is like a wild statement to say. Like, imagine if this wasn't about video games and that was so, that was something else. That was like, can we agree for round uh, two of this, like the the final purge of these kinds of? And then insert like a a race or something. <laughs> it's 2024. I've been arguing about this for decades. Can we have a last full detox of these dudes so we can get back to the positive gaming? What she's been arguing about gamers decades. So 2000. Let's say it's 2004. What was out in 2004? It was like a what are they like PS2 games like fucking WWE from Russia with Love, the James Bond game. Lego Star Wars, like what the fuck are you talking about, you stupid bitch? Community, we have been creating. Yes, let's get back to positive. Actually, good Call of Duty games. A final purge of gamers you don't like. This is absolutely insane stuff. Remember, members of the media have been calling gamers extremists and fascists for simply joining the Sweet Baby Inc. Detected Steam Group, that is a curation list of games to avoid. However, they also feel comfortable saying things like this, calling for the purge of people who do not share their ideological fucking odds. Logical views. Absolutely insane. Now you can see in the replies, Melanie Mac here says this, AKA, you want to purge real gamers in, fi in favor of oh. activists who can't hang in a multiplayer lobby without having a meltdown or who can navigate a single player game without yellow paint, shiny ledges, and the characters telling them what to do. Where Jules would reply with this, saying, nah, I want to purge the hate and vitriol from gamers who refuse to allow gaming to evolve and adapt as we humans are doing. I have... Humanity is not evolving at all whatsoever. Unless there's some supernatural shit going on in the background that we don't know about. <laughs> Humanity is not evolving. If anything, we're devolving. No problem with we're self-destructing. But hate, violence, and aggressive behavior isn't okay in any realm you live within. And of course, when you classify violence yeah, okay. and aggression and, and harassment and things like that, when it comes from people like Jules, they basically mean anyone fairly criticizing them, while also claiming legitimate harassment campaigns like that one led by a Sweet Baby Inc. employee doesn't fall under these categories. I remember that. But looking at what she's saying, it is a really radical thing, okay? Let's think about this sentiment that she's sharing, okay? She's basically saying we need to purge off this section of gamers who share some ideological view amongst themselves in order to adapt and evolve as humans. That's... Yeah, all you guys who play video games, who spend thousands of dollars on on just the games itself and the PCs to play it, all the consoles and the latest consoles and the controllers and the scuff controllers, if you remember those, and the fucking, all the DLCs, anything like bonus that you get with it, like, you know, if you get like a deluxe edition or whatever, you know, all you people that actually play the games, shame on you. 
how dare you when when we clearly need the uh the minority and by minority i mean like the zero point fucking zero six percent of people that these people are catering to that are playing games how dare you so fucking stupid sounds like a line out of the nuremberg trial all you people that actually buy the games and play them you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> like nearly 300 replies ratio an account with nearly 50,000 followers absolutely insane stuff and you can see here just like it was said in the article she is a how does she have two pronouns presenter slash host for bbc oh now moving forward, <laughs> let's return to another couple of updates regarding this this situation with Kotaku. Recently, there was a new order. Kotaku is going down the corrupt. Requiring Kotaku contributors to focus more on games. That was so funny, man. Like the the idea that your boss he wants you to play a video game, and make tutorials on, on set game. Didn't IGN do like a like a two minute video or something and post it on Twitter? That's literally what your boss wanted you to do. And what do you guys do? You resign. Classic guides than political news type stories and of course one of the editor-in-chiefs would resign in response to that now since then there has been a bit of a power struggle among the Kotaku has always done dog shit articles you anyways out of touch comments new position, positions opening up as a result of so there's nothing lost trying to make their stake and claim that new spot and you can see people like Alyssa Mercante That's what, she, she just screams red flag merchant. I don't know I don't think anyone cares she is a senior editor at Kotaku who's been very involved in this ongoing Gamergate situation. You can see her uh, award-winning story here, her coverage of the Sweet Baby Inc. situation where she intentionally omitted critical details of this situation because it would make her friends in the gaming censored. industry look bad. What's censored? What games have been censored these days? I know that Japan, they censored games like when the... Uh, when the Resident Evil Village game came out, there was like the two versions. There was the Western version where you see the guy, where they see the guy's hand come off, and then the Japanese version where it, nothing happens. And she's been taking this but I have no idea what that's about. But woke avoids avoid. Non-stop, including on social media, no matter the. Cost. I mean, if you don't want to waste your money, then yeah, avoid them. Avoid them games. She doesn't care because it's attention, and that's what she Play an actual good game. And you can see <laughs> made twenty years ago. Moved on from gamers generally, and she is now focused on uh, cancellation campaigns directed at YouTubers. Here, making what the fuck does Christianity got to do with it? There's a story I've been simmering that I really want to pick back up. Again, if anyone has any connections to a prominent female Twitch streamer slash gaming personality who leans very hard into Christianity and homophobia, DM me or email. Huh? This, uh, basically call to the fuck? That's very. That's like a very specific a thing. Gaming personality who leads, who leans very hard into Christianity. Who's trying to cancel? Homophobia, and they made it very clear based on the context. They were talking about Melanie Mack. Oh. Would reply eventually when I got the answer. Became very clear who Alyssa was talking about, and she would say basically on an initial glance of how Alyssa has been handling this, clearly her intentions are very bad faith. Now, shortly after that, she would make another tweet, this time addressing a more general group of personality slash streamers who have seen a meteoric rise in popularity shortly after adopting more reactionary views, basically asking people to share information. Of course, this invites a lot of bad faith actors who are looking to cancel yeah. YouTubers and streamers by sharing just asking for it. with people like Alyssa. Now, later, she would directly name one of these people that she's looking into, and that would Oops. be Asmongold. And she'd be asking people for information surrounding his apparent shift into more reactionary content and attitudes in general. And it's not really surprising that she would select Asmongold because she definitely has a bit of a hate boner for him. Another ad! And it's probably it. because he has been very involved in the I want me ad blocker back, man. I want me ad blocker. Games journalists. And in particular, he has directly addressed people like Alyssa and others trying to cancel him over recent events. I agree with him, but at the same time, Straight these are the same Kotaku people that were trying to find the real names of the guys that were in the Sweet Baby Discord. They Damn. would very quickly get you fired from your job without a second thought. And yeah, they don't give a shit. In the back whenever they find out that it worked. Yeah, they literally tried to cancel you. Yeah, they tried to shut me down. They tried to get my sponsorship with Capcom pulled because I had the audacity to think that Sweet Baby Inc. might not necessarily make every video game better. And 
I even had the audacity to say that other people had the right to have that opinion. And to her How dare he have the audacity to do that? <laughs> intentions behind all this how I dare he have common sense Alyssa and Kotaku and somewhat Jeremy common sense desperate for clicks they are not in a good space right now they are very at least more common sense than any of these report alleged reporters very desperate and talking about people like Asmongold and Melanie Mac they don't care how many people dogpile them and make fun of them and fairly criticize them they just want attention to save the sinking ship now, a lot of people have been pointing out this, this shift, right? They're talking about Asmongold and other people's shift. Well, here's a shift some people have been noticing, a pre-Kotaku versus post-Kotaku shift with Alyssa here, which is really funny. I mean, honestly, this just kind of looks like the average before and after of someone who goes to a liberal arts college. But anyways, moving Kern here, alert Asmongold that they were coming after him once again, where Asmongold would reply saying, if she wants to know what the motivation or reasoning is, behind my content she can just dm me directly now of course she yeah i never i can never wrap my head around this logic or this idea that instead of actually having the conversation with the person or just unfollowing and and or blocking that person so you can stop seeing whatever it is that's triggering you triggering you they just they just do tweets or subtweet them like what's what's that's obviously asking for attention you're obviously fucking you're a needy little bitch She's not going to do doing stupid and necessary things easier to make these general posts where bad actors will reach out and share information with Alyssa with the hopes of hurting Asmongold. Simply it's your problem with someone. Just talk to them directly or just avoid them. Everybody involved in the situation. But speaking of Mark Kern here, he has once again pointed out a very weird pattern of behavior with Alyssa where she's basically playing this like cat and mouse game where she is blocking. Kotaku writer follows me again after she claimed she only accidentally, quote unquote, accidentally, followed me the first time. Totally not stalker behavior. Unblocking, following, and then repeating that cycle over and over again with his account. It's very strange. She might have a crush on him. I'm not sure. But moving forward, Alyssa has been busy. I want to see that. Tattoo, and this is something people have been talking a lot about. Here is a zoom in. Of the message. It All says, men are enemies. Damn. Okay. Enemies. Holy shit. Now, a lot of people have been huffing their own farts and acting like this is some very, very deep message because it's quoting something. I don't really think it's not that deep. I think it's pretty clear really right there. Relevant. When you've seen her pattern of behavior, I think this is a message that if it was a quote, it would have quotation marks. Come on. Directed towards people. She does is literature that bad in, in, uh, in, in America? Male gamers. Now, returning to Alyssa's previous tweet asking for information about particular personality and streamers, we would see a reply from an individual named Irina Perea. I know your history in America is fucking dog shit education, but... My shitstorm pans out, talking about female biology is apparently an extremist position. Now, shortly, we will get some context on this statement, but who is this individual? While checking out her account, she is the CEO of Unleashed Games, a game that for many years, and also currently private on Twitter because of backlash that she's been facing from both gamers as well as Twitter users in general based on this tweet. It all started with this one right here saying, oh, okay, so until say they notice that none of our starting characters in our alpha build are white males. None out of six. Now that's a very weird thing to do, especially since this is the... We like to be diversive, inclusive, and uh, what was what was the E one? Equal? There's nothing very DEI about this, is there? If you're completely wiping out a race, a specific, a specific race in a game, anyways. They are excluding certain types of characters based on. Who's her boss? Uki Violetta? Okay. Color, Sorry, I had to. That is not a very good thing. That is not something that people are going to tolerate in this current atmosphere where gamers are calling out these ridiculous attitudes of developers like this. Now, what is Unleashed Games? You can see they're also private. If you go to their website, you see Elements of the Dragon, their code on respect that states. Oh my god. Respect is fundamental. Is this, does this show how unprofessional I am? Should I have preloaded this video, pre-watched it? <laughs> god damn it. Fucking nuts. Mental. From working internally as a team to how we treat our players. Respect runs deep in our, they clearly don't. And our being. 
and the best way to show respect is to listen. Quite an what a crock of shit. Code if you look at what she was just previously saying, but let's move forward and see some other interactions she's been having on social media, where one user said, just here watching the ratio take effect, where Irina replies saying, I know it's awesome. My follower count keeps going up. Hashtag keep going. Ah, uh, yes, definitely not insecure. And also, I'm glad you're listening to people, right? Let's see Irina, based on her company's code, continuing to respect gamers by listening to their criticisms, where they say, representation matters. Inclusivity is not the same as racism. Huh? Enjoy hating on me for today. I'll go back to making games. So she is basically wafting away any criticism and claiming that what she's doing is not discrimination. It's actually inclusivity. Well, yes, you can make this inclusion of, uh, let's say, persons of color in terms of characters, but it's still discrimination. It doesn't wipe away the fact that you're discriminating against other types based on the color of their skin and their gender. That doesn't erase that element. It still happened. It doesn't cancel it out. But moving forward, another person would talk about the recent video game conference. We'll get into that in a minute. But saying the video game conference is not about video games. Where Irina would reply saying, people make video games. People sometimes talk about human things. Shocking, I know. Making video games for over 25 years with predominantly male co-workers. It was a notable moment I shared that has somehow now sparked up a lot of male rage. Now, what is she talking about? We'll get context in a moment. But clearly she has a issue with male game developers and males in general. Clearly. We see it in this reply down here where she says, Considering that 95% of video game characters are white and male, a poor representation of oh, the equity. diversity of actual players, I That's thought it would be a fun experiment. We started with all female characters. Now, of course, this claim of 95% of video game characters being white and male is outrageous. I would love to see where she got that number from. But continuing on, you would see the, the reference to what she's been talking about this whole time. So... Two women sharing intimate stories about getting our periods in the GDC. It's like once people have their own ideology of what history is in the past and stuff, it's like you can't convey to them, you can't get it into their thick head, the actual facts of what's happened in history in time, in the past. And it's like everything just flies straight over the head. It's like, no, th that never happened. My truth is the truth. Well, that can be your truth, but it's not the truth, is it? Shut the fuck up. Merch store I'll try to read a book. The state of the game industry. Where this user says, this is a parody, right? Fully serious. It's nice to have other women in the industry and to be vulnerable and real with them in a way that we can't be with the majority of devs. This GDC was the most female powered of any of the past GDCs. I am 100% here for this. Now, the GDC, of course, is something that we've talked about. It was the uh, Game Developers Conference in San Francisco, California, that just closed a few days ago. Yes. Classic. That is the one where they were screaming. Oh, they were that one, yeah. It was like a bunch of banshees outside. The current state of the gaming industry and their criticism and the criticism that they're facing from gamers that they think is really unfair. Let's remind ourselves of how cult-like these people are. <laughs> this just this just, they just sound like a bunch of you know them rubber like dog toy turkey like the chicken things the yellow rubber ducky things whatever they are they just sound like a bunch of them being pressed down and like you know insert clip <laughs> spot the difference <laughs> what does this actually do what do you actually gain from that other than being annoying annoying pieces of shit or should i say the most detached thing from gaming and showing that's evolution right there guys that's the evolution of humanity right there the industry that they're supposed to be working in but moving forward we can see irena's participation in the recent gdc where she had a whole conversation exactly how you would expect this whole thing to be framed but looking at this entire situation what a mess as mark kern says here i thought dei virtue signaling was supposed to be Venture good for business. And as you can see, never been good for business. Unleashed games account and Irina's account are private. Yeah, I thought this was supposed to be something that all gamers wanted and that was 
the progressive future that everyone is striving towards except for a, a couple of extremist white male gamers. Well, as it turns out, everybody hates this stuff and they are getting an eye-opening experience. People like Irina are really finally starting to see that what they're pushing for, their agenda, is not wanted it is not wanted among gamers it is only tolerated and i'm terrible at nodding i can't i don't have it raised properly so i can nod but yes but i agree nod nod is to them, and this is a good thing so today was definitely a very wild video some very wild topics so as always, it is quite interesting share your thoughts on them in the comment section down below but that's yes what he just said <laughs> comment down below your opinion hmm this is so stupid though like the whole <sighs> How am I supposed to wrap my head around this, guys? This is supposed to be the evolution of humanity right here, with the whole DEI virtue signaling, and it's just the quote-unquote woke. Like, it's just, it's not working. Nothing's working. Companies are losing money. They're losing fan bases. And there's, like, a bunch of idiots out there that's spending the money anyways. Like, I don't get it. Just get it out of here! Get it the fuck out. We don't want this dog shit. But we do want more videos, so leave a like, subscribe. And uh, let me know what you think, what you'd want to see next, what you want me to react to or to play. Or if there's like a specific topic, I'll look into it and try talking about it or something. No politics though. Because uh, uh, I'm uh, old fashioned slash have common sense. I have a brain. Also, I'm not American, so I don't have any fucking current political agendas or, you know, poor education. <laughs> Sorry, America, but it's true. Yeah, I'll see you in the next one.